Hey, man, great job, great job. We always appreciate the work that she does in lively our service. Four and I have a chair here today. Welcome to each one that is here on this uh, pre Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, Bonnie's got a whole load of announcements for us today, so we're going to get to those. We've got a few changes that we want to make note of with Bible study and things like that. Uh, and uh, we just trust and pray that you are staying safe. Uh, I know you can't turn on the new one from here uh, and not here. Uh, the gloom and doom and, and how uh, numbers are up and, and all that stuff uh, is going on. And we know it's all very real. We want you to be safe. We want you to be careful. And you that are watching online, we totally, we totally understand and respect you uh, you're doing that way. That's why we're uh, bringing the service to you this way as best we can. So if I can give us some announcements today and we will see where we go from there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Doesn't the church love to do the Amen. I know that um, next Sunday I'm going to start to add them. And so I'm going to start with the two of them today. Very nice. So the candles will be on here next Sunday. We'll be ready uh, ready to begin Advent. Thank you, everyone. that worked so hard yesterday putting all these things up. Looks gorgeous. Amen. Anyway, do we have any first-time visitors in person or online this morning? Even if you're watching this as a recording later in the week, please comment that this is your first time so that we can honor you as our special guest. Yeah. Our next church birthday is Saturday, December 5th at 8.30 in the morning. And be sure to check the comment of names for today. Each week, three family names will appear under our comment club section in the bulletin. Reach out to him to encourage our friends with a call or a card. Mm -hmm. uh, this week is John uh, Ray and Jim Cavanaugh, and uh, Mary Gilbert. Amen. I actually talked to Lord Rule last night, and uh, he and Kathy, we, we talked to him, and uh, Kathy and I talked to him, and he was in good spirits. He says he's got uh, four more radiation treatments, and he's actually going for one. He's probably at one right now this morning. So keep growing your prayers. He's, uh, he's up, he's down, he's contracted shingles on top of the, the, the liver cancer. So uh, he says, Pastor, he says, I'm a mess. <laughs> so, so let's pray for him. But he's still got that raw sense of humor and just, uh, just a pure, pure heart and, uh, for, for God. And we, we just love the Roy. So keep him in your prayers. And, and call these folks too this week. Uh, they're all doing. Uh, as well as can be expected. So we're, we're just happy to be able to pray for them and keep them involved. Hey, Bonnie. There will be no Bible study this week with the Thanksgiving holiday. The weekly Revelation Bible study continues following Wednesdays, December 2nd, 9th, and 16th, but it's only online. We will evaluate the Bible study again beginning in January. We can bring an end to this pandemic as I'm sure you all are. We have a new communion preparation list on the bulletin board for 2021. The list is going to start so far. If you are able to help with this, please sign up for a designated week and month. Thank you. Amen. As a matter of fact, I think the only ones signed up are Maureen and Denny. So, you know, we just might have to put them for the rest of the year. But <laughs> if no one else signs up. So please take a look at it and fill in the gap for your camera. Right? And then begins next Sunday on November 29th. Pastor Wendell is looking for folks to accept the Advent Challenge of Bible reading beginning December 1st. Read a chapter each day in the book of Luke until chapter 24 on Christmas Eve. God will bless your efforts in His Word. And the Long Scale Christmas Battle, starting on Sunday, December 6th, after service, gets you tickets from JD Pixar. Please stay safe and well as we enter this holiday season. Wear those masks, keep the distance, and avoid those large gatherings. You are important to us. Amen. Any announcements we might have missed? Okay. Please join me in the call for worship. Give thanks to God. We thank God for joy, laughter, and multiple blessings. We thank God at all times and for everything. We thank God for help in times of struggle and fear. We thank God at all times and for everything. We thank God for the 
Christ, all is in his hands. I for you. I for you. For those watching online, this is on your Facebook page. I got two for the price of one because the uh, the next song, the last song, uh, Count Your Blessings, is on the same page. So I just had to take one picture and get both songs. So let's do 540. We gather together. Um, let's do the first and the last verse. <laughs>
Alice Miller misses a chance to make it. Thank you. 
good to give thanks to the Lord. The same praise is to your name all the time. To be prepared to spend the best one in the morning and the day for us for a To the music of the lute and the heart of the mouth of the Lord. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. And the works of your hands are soon to join. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. Amen. 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 I thank you so much. And again, as Bonnie echoed earlier, thank you for each one that had a part in bringing the church into the uh, Christmas season for this year. What a, uh, what a blessed time. What a blessed time it is, for sure. You know, the holidays. You say the holidays to people, more often than not, you're going to arouse various sets of emotions. And uh, some people just embrace, you know, everything. And uh, Thanksgiving and then and Christmas, some folks go through like, I just can't wait for it to be over. You know? You know anybody like that? I think we all do. Some of us might be that way. And other people just kind of, just kind of, kind of want to, you know, it's like, they just kind of want to wallow, wallow, wallow in it, you know? And oh boy, it's just great. I love it. And then they soak in every aspect of Thanksgiving, every aspect of Christmas. And I mean, it's just, it just wow, they love it. We watch a lot of it. We watch and enjoy it. Don't, don't stress over things that uh, are really inconsequential. You know? it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if the, if the turkey is not the best one that you've ever made. You know, as, as long as it's edible, you know, that, that's really what matters, right? Or that gravy just didn't have that right taste, or, or this, that, or that. But then enjoy, to whatever degree you can, you know, time with family, whether it's uh, there with you in the household, or uh, on a Zoom call, or whatever it is. We had some of the grandkids over yesterday, and uh, they, uh, they're a lot of fun, but you know, they're exhausting, too. <laughs> they're exhausting. And, uh, because there's many of them, and there's only one of me, and one of Kathy, and they're always wanting something. You're not a bunch of attention, but we love them, and we know you guys love your families. And we're just thrilled that we can be thankful for the blessings that God has given to us. But we know that every good thing comes from the Lord. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, and I'm going to get to speak for Kathy as well, we wish you. A very happy Thanksgiving, happy, healthy, as we segue into the Advent season next Sunday. We're excited about what uh, what God is going to do with our hearts, with our churches. And if you're thinking about doing the Advent reading with me, just reading a chapter a day, beginning in, in Luke. There's 24 chapters in Luke. So if you start on December 1st and you read the first chapter, you read a chapter a day up and through Christmas Eve. December 24th. If we're looking just a little bit farther ahead, we will, I'll probably say this a few times, we will have, God willing, a, uh, a Christmas uh, candlelight service in the church this year. We will broadcast it online as well, but that service will not be on Christmas Eve. We're going to bump it up just one day to Wednesday, December 23rd at 7 o'clock in the evening. Because I know many folks have commitments. Uh, the tradition here for a number of years has been Christmas Eve. But, but so many folks have commitments with family and things might have relaxed a little bit by then. We, we don't know. But I want you to be able to enjoy your time with family, your time at home on Christmas Eve as you're preparing for a, another special Christmas day. But we will have something here. And if it's me and, and, and Kathy and uh, you know, a couple others, you know, that's that's the way it will be. But the doors will be open, and then you'll be able to come and uh, sing some Christmas carols and, and light uh, you know, light a candle, and uh, we'll just uh, we'll have a good time worshiping the Lord that night uh, for sure. Amen. So December twenty third. That's, that's the Wednesday before Christmas at seven in the evening. Thanksgiving every day. Every day. I think I was watching one of those Hallmarks a while back, and uh, the girl was making a marketing pitch for Christmas, and she was calling it Christmas 365. So we could use that same 
uh, thing for Thanksgiving. We, sh we should be thankful Thanksgiving 365. Every day of the year for the child of, of God should be, we should be thankful. We should be thankful. We should have Thanksgiving every day. But I dare say that if I ask you what comes to mind when you think about Thanksgiving Day, what, uh, well, why don't I just ask you? I shouldn't presume for you, right? What comes to mind? Let's see if you've got the answer right. Turkey. Turkey. All right, I think that's a safe assumption. That's a good one. Dressing. Well, what else? Dressing. Okay. Potatoes and gravy. Potatoes and gravy. My parents were married on Thanksgiving Day, 1935. Wow, that is a very special memory. Yeah. A very special memory for you. So, is there anything else that comes to mind? Family get together. Family get together. Okay. What? Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Wow. You are a child after my own heart. Else? <laughs> the song over the river of dream the woods. Is that right? Now I wouldn't have guessed that one in a million years, but uh, I can see where you'd make that connection. I, think I only we always had to travel from Ohio to Indiana. To the grandparents and aunts and uncles. That uh, makes sense then. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. That's another handbag here. Was it Vivian? Go ahead. That Mary had to see and is doing wonderful. Good, good. Amen. Amen. That is fantastic. So that reminds you of Thanksgiving. That that's a good thing. It's a good thing. I mean, I've not heard the one that I was expecting, but maybe looking around the crowd, you know, Bill might have said it. It, it, it deals with something like this. Football. Yeah, I mean, football is a big thing for a lot of people on Thanksgiving, isn't it? After, after the meal is done, the turkey and all these other fixings that you guys have said. Uh, they all fall asleep. <laughs> what? They all fall asleep. They all fall asleep watching football. Watching football. Yeah, it was kind of a staple back at our house, you know. You'd, you'd have the belt, you'd have to unloosen the belt a couple of rungs. I mean, everybody just sit there and kind of moan and groan and, and, and wallow there on the couch for a while before you fell asleep. <laughs> but, you know, but, but all these things characterize Thanksgiving, and you, you've mentioned them. You got all of mine. You got all of mine. And but, but, but what a blessed day it is. But then it ends. The, the day ends, and uh, we know that in the midst of this pandemic, things are going to be different than they've ever been before. Uh, with, with Black Friday, I got the bright idea one time, you know, when I had, uh, I was on my own for the first time in a number of years, and uh, I got the bright, I had never done anything Black Friday related. So I thought, I thought back then, that when it said the doors open at five in the morning, that there wouldn't be anybody there. <laughs> And so I thought, well, I'm going to catch my train at 7.15 and go to work. So I'll just run down to that store. And uh, needless to say, you all know what a fool I was. <laughs> I mean, I, I can still remember looking around like, where did all these people come from? No one can be up at this time. I'm shopping. This is impossible. This is impossible. So I was very, very gullible back then. I have since... Become aware of what Good Friday was all about, but I don't know how it will be this year. I'm not going to get out and check. I mean, I, I, small, I lock myself in all the rooms of the house now on Good Friday and I stay. I don't go out to buy anything. Anything, but, you know, Thanksgiving means different things to different people, but there's some. There's some things that we have to, to plan for. There's some things that, uh, even as Thanksgiving ends, our gratitude, our thanksgiving toward God should not end. It should continue throughout every day of our lives. Now, the scripture that Bonnie read for you this morning from Psalm 92. I knew, Bonnie, that this was the, uh, the scripture that God had for us today. When uh, early in the week, this past week, I was talking to my dad, and he said something about Psalm 92. And I go, no, oh, Dad, that's my scripture for Sunday. Well, that's a good scripture, son. And, and we, we talked a little bit about, you know, 
how being thankful to the Lord and, and, and God's spirit of thanksgiving. I said, Lord, you just kind of confirmed that I'm on the right track for this week. Gratitude to God not only honors Him, but it is good for us. That's what this psalm tells us. That's what David is, is saying when he says, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing His praises unto Thy name, O Most High. It's a good thing. As I was here, just kind of meditating on, on that scripture a little bit this week. That phrase, a, a good thing, or God saw that something was good. I flashed back a little bit to the, uh, to the first book of the Bible, Genesis. The first chapter of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, when God was creating the world, and God created different things, and He created different things on the earth, and plant and animal life, and that phrase that would conclude those verses, and God made such and such, and God saw that it was good. It was good. And when God sees something as good, He pronounces it as so. And it made him happy. It pleased the Lord that he saw those things, those creations that he had made, that they were all good upon the earth. They were perfect. They were sinless. They were, you know, they, they, they were just so special. And he pronounced them good. That's the same way that we need to worship him, that we need to be thankful to him, that we need to show our gratitude toward him. I don't suppose that any of us that uh, have had kids, as we establish ground rules and uh, you know, rules of the house and rules for their comings and goings and things like that, I know that none of you ever had any of those kids push back on you, did you? <laughs> none, of, none of you ever really raised a rebellious son or daughter. It's kind of our nature, isn't it? We push back to some extreme, some more than others. But you know, and it's the same thing as with God. When God gives, God back in the Old Testament gave the Hebrews, His chosen people, He gave them guidelines, He gave them rules and regulations, He gave them a sacrificial system that He instituted, not because He had nothing better to do, because He wanted to guide them into a way and a plan and a, an aspect of obedience in their lives. He wanted to teach them. He wanted to teach them. He gave them very specific, detailed instructions about His laws, about sacrifices, and how He wanted them to live. Much in the same way we have with our kids. Much in the same way that our parents, perhaps, you know, did with us. And when God was teaching the nation of Israel, He incorporated the same thoughts that probably we did as we tried to, to teach our kids, you know. God specifically taught Israel that uh, He wanted them to know that He was holy. He wanted them to know that He was holy. He wanted them to know that they, as a people, they as humanity, were sinful. He needed them to understand that. He needed them to understand thoroughly that obedience to Him for blessings in their lives but it was not an option. Obedience was something that had to come. They had to choose. Had to choose. You got to choose to obey. You chose to come here today. Some of you, I mean, I heard Barb, not to, not to pick Barb out, but I heard Barb say she came in and she, you looked out, you saw it was raining, you saw it was nasty, but you chose to come anyway. You chose to come anyway. And uh, there's probably a bunch of people you know, here and, and in other places who looked out, were going to come to church and go someplace else, and when they saw the nasty weather, or the less than adequate you know, circumstances or situations, they made another choice. So when we choose to do the things that we want to, we need to choose to honor God. We need to choose to obey God every single day because it's not for God's benefit, it's for ours. Because He wants to teach us. He wants us to have that spirit of thanksgiving. One of the offerings that the Lord institute, instituted for the Hebrews back in the Old Testament was an 
offering of thanksgiving, where in the morning and the evening, with an offering of thanksgiving that the people would understand, and they would look back upon God's deliverance from them out of the nation of Egypt. Out of that time when Moses led them out across the Red Sea into the Promised Land. That offering of, of praise for thanksgiving, that's what that was all about. To remember that time when God delivered them. Now you may have been, uh, you may have been going through some things, you may be going through some things, or you may be on the cusp of going through some things. But we all need to understand and be thankful for the fact that God is with us and He can deliver us to whatever we go through. The conversation I had with Roy last night, I mean, Roy has, he's got a title of liver cancer. He's got a title of liver cancer. He's read the, the information on it. He's familiar with what it is. To desire to grow his heart is to be here in church, worshiping God, and trying to make a difference for the Lord. How can I serve the Lord? Is the attitude of his heart. Amazing man he is. How could you not love him? How could you not love him? But he's thankful in spite of the circumstances. That's one thing that I have learned. I can speak from, from personal experience. Circumstances don't, shouldn't dictate the choices of gratitude I make toward God. Because regardless of what's going on, regardless if I'm sick, if I'm well, if, if, if I have money or if I'm broke, or if this is going on or that's going on, none of those circumstances matter because God is still God. And He still loves me. And his promises are true to me. His promises are true to you. And when Jesus told the disciples that I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again to get you. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. As one of the things Dave Williams back in the day, when I go fishing with my grandpa, when grandpa said we were going fishing, I just had to wait for him to come. I mean, some days it might be a little longer, something came up, but he always came. If Grandpa said he was coming, he always, he was always there. And he was usually pretty anxious to fish, so he was more, more often early than late. But you could always count on him. And in the same way, we can always count on God to be available to us. Whatever circumstance we're going through, he'll be there. He'll be there. You may not, you may not like it. You may not enjoy it. I've gone through things that uh, I found downright painful. And perhaps you have as well. But you know, God was still there. God was still there every step of the way. Thanksgiving, a heart of gratitude toward Him, and God sees that those things are good. Should we be any less than the Hebrews giving thanks to God in the morning and the evening? Being thankful for God's written word to us? God loves it when we, we read His word. He loves it when we take time to talk to Him in prayer. Not just about things that, that we need. Don't get me wrong. Those things are important. And he wants to hear those. But you know, just as a husband and a wife, you know, I don't know if Kathy can hear me or not. There are times when we sit down at the dinner table, we'll just sit down someplace, and we'll just talk about the day, the situation, or, or something in the yard, or her feeding the squirrels, the rabbit, or, or something, you know. We'll just talk. And I stop and I reflect, and I think of those moments, and I think of how special they are. There's two people that love each other, are communicating, talking, sharing, wanting to be a part of each other's lives. And we can have that every day, not only with each other, but with God. The God that formed the universe, the God that framed creation from the ground up. He wants to have that with you 
every single day. And we can just stop and talk to Him. Ever look out in the sky and say, what, 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 what a beautiful sunrise. What a beautiful sunset. What a beautiful blue. What a beautiful color. This, that, and the other. Or the leaves as they turn. All the things that make nature special. All the things that make creation special. We can thank God for those. Every time I put my key in the car and turn it and it starts, I say, thank you, Lord. There's been a number of times over the years in various cars where it didn't. It didn't. You know what I mean? We thank you for all of these good things that he's done for us. And we can have a conversation with him just as, just, just as two people are sitting down. We can talk to God. And he hears us. And his spirit that lives within us, you know, Christ as our Savior, bears us up and guides us. We can begin by taking note of these simple things as the Hebrews did. The simple things. We can be thankful for a job. We can be thankful for retirement income. We can be thankful for family. We can be thankful, as the song said, for, for a roof over our heads. As I was laying in my bed last night and I could hear that rain beginning to fall on the roof. I said, thank you, Lord, and I don't have a hole in it. <laughs> you know, that it's not coming through, that the rain is outside and not in here. I mean, all of these little things we can be thankful for. I'm just thankful for God's blessings. Even some of those nights, you know, when we I like to thank God for a good night's sleep. I wake up in the morning with some of those nights when you toss and you turn and you just can't seem to, to get comfortable and, and, and things just seem a little out of whack. We need to be thankful for that because God woke us up in the morning. We acknowledge Him. We acknowledge Him and we appreciate Him as He helps us realize that we, I can't make it through a day without Jesus, without our Father's leading. So true, heartfelt, daily thanksgiving has a powerful impact on each of our lives as we bring this to a conclusion. That word gratitude, that word thankfulness, gratitude keeps us, keeps us continually aware that we're walking in God's presence that continues to contribute to a a godly lifestyle. If I know I'm walking where God wants me to walk, I'm careful to be about His business, looking at things through His eyes. I'm less apt to make a mistake, to slip up, to fall into something that would harm me or to be dangerous to me if I'm in gratitude to God. He wants me. He wants me to make right choices. He wants me I'm ready to motivate me to look for God's purpose in every aspect of what I'm doing. Gratitude will help me to bring my will for what I want into submission and allow God's will to work in and through me. Gratitude will remind me that God wants me to tell others about Him. Tell others that He can make a difference in, in their lives the way He has in mine. Gratitude will tell me to trust Him because he's proved himself over and over and over. Gratitude will remove anxiety in your life and in mine. No sense for me to worry about anything if I've given it to God. It makes no sense at all. Still, I do sometimes. Perhaps you do too. If you've given something to God, that, I mean, that's like taking something to the Supreme Court. There's no higher power. He is the Supreme Court of our lives, and He, he can deal with it. We give to Him, and we trust Him. Are you thankful to Him today? If you're watching online, do you know Christ as your Savior? If you've never heard a message like this before, you need to understand as we're thankful to God, we can be thankful because He loved us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Will you admit today that you're a sinner, that you can't save yourself from your sins? Will you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross like the one behind me? 
He died for your sins. He made it personal. It's not about religion. It's not about attending church. It's about a personal relationship that you can have with one who died for your sins who wants to be your Savior. Do you know Him as your Savior today? If you confess your sins to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He takes care of it. He's taking care of it. You have to trust Him. If you've never done that, we invite you to do that. If you're watching online, send a... Just say something I'd like to know more about knowing Jesus. We'll contact you prior and we'll make sure you know you know how you can receive Christ. How you can confirm your faith in Him today. Amen. Are we thankful today? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Alright. Let's see. Page number 543. If you'd like to stand and stretch your legs. If you're able to, that's fine. Let's do the first verse. First verse only, Laura, of 543. Come, be thankful people, come. <laughs> Father God, we thank you this 
stage of lust is with, and we think of a conversation with Roy. I pray the Lord, even as he's perhaps getting through this radiation treatment this morning, Lord, that your hand would be on him. That you touch him as so only you can, Lord. Uh, the cancer and also the shingles, Lord, that's uh, really, really frustrating. We just pray God that you touch our brother. He's, uh, he's an amazing man. I love him. Just pray that you strengthen him, lift him up, his family, and support him. Pray for each one of them as well. Continue to pray for Jim Pappenheim, Lord. Uh, uh, he's Lord of recovery. Gene, Lord, we just pray that you bless them, touch them. Pray for the news from Alice, that uh, Rich Ann is back at work, and none of the the rest of the family has COVID. We pray that uh, God would keep them safe and well. And Lord, I uh, just pray for Alice too, Lord, as uh, she continues to heal and uh, strengthen her. And Lord, I uh, pray for Mark uh, and, and John, who are at home, Lord, uh, with, with, with COVID and in various stages of it. And just pray that you bring them through this, Father. It's only you can heal. Pray for Terry, Lord, as uh, she had foot surgery this week. If you could be with her as she uh, continues to heal. Father, we've got many, many more in the world, and Lord, uh, I think of Jane Arn, Lord, and uh, I think of uh, Lloyd's cousin Kathy, and Lord, uh, just, just many, many others, Lord, that are here. It's good to see Audrey, because today as she's still recovering, working her issue with the foot. And, and God, we just pray for, for all of these that are on our lists, on our email lists, and for each one that's on unspoken heart. God, we write this story and are thankful. Help us to be thankful and be gratitude every single day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of our Amen. Amen. Thank you. Ushers, would you come? For so those that are watching online, We've had and more and more folks uh, you know, dropping their envelopes off uh, here through the week at church. And so many of you can do that, we drop it in the mail. Uh, we need your support. This, uh, what goes on here, the stuff going on here through the week, the uh, you know, preschool is back in session now after a brief hiatus, uh, COVID related. So we're just trying to take care of things as, as they come up and do the best we can, but we need your help. Financially now more than ever. So if you can help us, please do that. Please do that. How should you count? Markston uh, commented that he is feeling uh, much better, so feeling good. So praise the Lord for that. Mark, we keep, keep praying. John, you and you too.
staff here at St. John's United Church of Christ in Crown Point. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, yeah. All right. Remain standing for our closing song. We did this one last week, but two weeks in a row it's still you gotta count those blessings, right? Amen. Let's do the first and the last verse. Win a polarized billows from a tempest toss. Who's been tossed about a billow this week? <laughs> <laughs> not, not a phrase I probably used in conversation with anybody. <laughs> but I have counted my blessings, so I'm going with that one. First and the fourth. Thank you. 